Are Canon's RF lenses really better than Canon's EF lenses? Okay, so before we get into it, do us a favor. If you like the video, hit the like button, hit subscribe. It really helps with our YouTube algorithms and lets them know that you guys are watching these videos and that you like them and it'll get it out there to more people. So really appreciate that. When Canon introduced its R mirrorless, full frame mirrorless camera a couple of years ago, it also introduced a new mount for the system, which is the RF mount. So EF lenses were for the DSLR line, SLRs before that, but for the DSLRs for the last 10 plus years are EF mount lenses. The new mirrorless has the RF mount. It's a whole new system. And you can use your EF lenses on your mirrorless camera, but you need an adapter, which I use, which is fine. It works great. But I've noticed when I started using them, I got the RF 50 millimeter 1.2, which was the first one, the RF 15 to 35 zoom, and the RF 70 to 200. And I was really impressed by these lenses. They really are great lenses. The first thing I noticed, the first comparison I did, and you can check out that video, I'll put a link below, is the comparison between the 15 to 35 zoom, 2.8 zoom lens, the RF, versus the Zeiss 15 millimeter F2.8 prime lens that I had been using for years. I did a comparison with them right out of the box and I was blown away by the quality of the Canon RF 15 to 35 zoom in comparison to that Zeiss. I sold the Zeiss, I kept a 15 to 35. That was a long time ago. And I had been noticing now in editing images, it's been a couple of years now, that the images that I'm getting with my EF lenses, I'm finding less and less impressive sharpness-wise, contrast-wise, compared to the RF lenses that I'm using now. And I don't know if it was my imagination or just different scenarios, just different situations. So basically what I want to do is do a comparison of the same images taken using EF lenses versus my RF lenses. So basically I took, I did two of them. Uh, the Canon EF 24 millimeter 1.4 lens versus the 24 millimeter focal length using the 15 to 35 at the same apertures, 2.8 and 8.0. And then the same thing using a longer focal length, my Canon EF 135 F2 lens, which is one of my favorites versus the 135 focal length on my 70 to 200 zoom, again, both at 2.8 and 8.0. So I wanted to take the exact same images, compare them in the computer, zoom in, make sure, you know, compare them right to each other, right next to each other, so we can see quality-wise, really, is RF really that much better uh, than the EF? And really see, you know, Am I imagining things or is the R, are the RF lenses really that much better? Okay, let's start with the 24 millimeter focal length. I have the EF on the left and the RF on the right. And keep in mind the EF is actually stopped down two stops from maximum aperture on this one. And the RF is actually wide open, its maximum is 2.8. So right on the screen, full screen like this, they look basically the same. Let's dig into the middle, right in the center. And the EF on the left actually looks a little bit better, a little bit sharper. Uh, then the one on the right, then the RF on the right. Colors are basically the same. Let's look into the corners and we'll look at uh, the difference there. And actually now the in the corners, the RF on the right is nicer, considerably nicer than the EF on the left down in the corner there. And even though the EF is stopped down two stops from maximum aperture, it's actually even nicer. And that's what I noticed about the RF when I compared it to the 15 to the 15 Zeiss was the corners were really much nicer. Look at the other corner up here. And again, you can see on the right, the sharpness, the contrast and everything is much nicer on the RF. But let's stop down to F8 and compare them at that. So this is at F8, again, EF on the left, RF on the right. We'll look right in the center. And again, the EF has a, a little bit of an edge in sharpness right in the middle compared to the RF, which is a little surprising, even though they both stopped down to F8, but it is a tiny bit sharper right in the middle. Let's look back into the corners. And again, even at F8, the RF is impressively sharper in the corners, at least in that corner. Let's go to the top corner here. Uh, it's much closer up here, but you can still see on the right-hand side, the RF is definitely sharper there. So much less of a difference uh, but it, there is actually a difference. The RF, uh, I give the RF a slight advantage to this, looking at a flat image like this. Uh, but they're basically both very comparable. It just shows you how good that 
EF 1.4 lens is. Uh, again, it's stopped down several stops from maximum aperture on the EF. This is both at F8, so very, very comparable. Not much of a difference, which is impressive for the RF zoom lens because it's a zoom lens. Let's take a look at a different image here. Again, now these are both at F2.8, EF on the left, RF on the right. Look right in the middle. The EF, again, right in the middle here has a little bit of an advantage in sharpness and contrast right in the middle compared to the RF on the right. Again, we're comparing a prime to a zoom, uh, so maybe that's why, but it's a little bit nicer in the, right in the center there. Look up in the corner. And now there, now you can see where the RF takes the advantage on the right-hand side. It's a little bit out of focus because it's an f2.8. But uh, you can see the advantage that the RF has on the right-hand side. So let's look at this at f8. Same image at f8 here. You can see right in the middle again, right in the center. The EF lens is definitely a little bit better in the center. Look up in the corner. And it's much closer, same results that we had before. Very, very similar in the corners. Check this corner down here in the cement. Very, very similar in the corners. Basically, this you're getting the same imaging. You're getting a little bit sharper on the EF right in the center. Really not enough to make a difference though. So given the fact that the EF is a prime 1.4 lens, uh, if you're looking for a wide open prime lens, then it's obviously a great choice when you're comparing these two. If you're looking for a more variable, more versatile, I mean, zoom lens, uh, you're basically going to get the same results uh, with the 15-35 f2.8. Now let's look at the 135 millimeter focal length. Now on the left-hand side we have the EF 135 f2, which is one of my favorite lenses of all time. Uh, this is stopped down to 2.8. Both of these are at 2.8. On the right-hand side we have the RF. 70 to 200 millimeter f2.8, uh, both obviously at 2.8. So they look basically the same here. Dig right into the center, and I mean, it's very, very comparable, but I gotta say the RF on the right is a little bit sharper, looks a little bit nicer on the RF on the right. Let's look at the out of focus areas. Now, the EF on the left, you can see a little bit, a little bit pointy, a little bit hexagonal. On these, uh, on these highlights compared to the more circular RF on the left, which makes it look a little bit nicer in the background. Again, the RF actually can't go out to 2.0, so if I was gonna bump this EF on the left out to 2.0, it's gonna look nicer there. But apples to apples, comparing 2.8 to 2.8, the EF's a little bit, you can see those corners on the highlights where on the RF it's nice and rounded, but very comparable at 2.8. Here's the same image stopped down to f8 for both lenses. And again, the RF on the right is considerably sharper than the EF on the left. Not tremendously, but you can definitely see a difference between the two. So let's look at a flat image and compare the corners. So this is shot from a little further away. Both of these are at f2.8, EF on the left, RF on the right. And as you can see also, the RF on the right here is noticeably sharper uh, in the center compared to the EF on the left. Take a look along the edges here, and you can see on the edges, the RF definitely has the advantage along the edges. Same thing with the 24 millimeters that we looked at before. You can see how much of a difference there is there. And here's the same image now stopped down to F8 for both images. RF on the right there is definitely a little bit sharper, just a little bit than the EF, maybe not definitely, maybe just a hair. Look up in the corners, and they're very, very similar in the corners. Very comparable at F8, but a slight advantage to the RF lens. So now, what does this mean? Well, first of all, we're comparing really amazing lenses, really great EF lenses versus really great RF lenses. So the quality that we see in these is obviously very, very good. Uh, basically, what I'd like to get to eventually is having RF lenses that are replacing the old EF lenses. So far we don't have any, there's a couple of nice wide primes. The 50 millimeter 1.2 is probably the best lens I've ever used. Uh, but there really isn't anything else right now to replace the wide primes that I have. The 24, the 135, really nothing that I, so I'm still stuck using the EF. I say stuck using the EF lenses like it's, it's a bad thing. It's really great lenses still. Uh, but I would like the opportunity to at least you know, try those lenses in the RF version, even if it's in a, a Sigma lens. Because uh, I think the potential for 
the quality to be even greater than what we see here. You know, I think a, a, a wide 135 RF prime uh, could potentially look even better than the 135 focal length on the 70 to 200 zoom. Uh, if that's the case, it's going to be really amazing. And then the actual opportunity to be able to open it up wider than 2.8, uh, 2.0 on the 135, 1.4 on a 24 lens, uh, I think that's really going to make a, a pretty big difference. So are the RF lenses better? Yes, a little, a tiny little bit better, uh, but we really just don't have enough to compare yet on the RF side versus uh, versus the EF version. So that's what we need to do. We need to get Canon, Sigma, Tamron. We need to get these guys getting us some more RF lenses because uh, it's a great system. And I think the potential for more creative lenses, wider aperture lenses, all different focal lengths, I think is there's a lot of opportunity. Uh, so let's get these let's get these lenses out. Any comments or questions, let us know down below. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you next time.